Thank you. So, no, sorry, squeeze it, squeeze it. Okay, got it. Thank you. So, for those of you who didn't get it from the name, I'm foreign. Uh, I come from Hungary, and uh, until I was 18 years old, I grew up in a two-room apartment in a building that we just lovingly call Stalin Fabulous. <laughs> so when I was 18, my family decided that it was enough. We needed a garden, we needed a house, we needed a real family experience. So we moved out to the countryside, to a village close to the town where I was born, and we built a house with a huge garden on top of a hill. You can see all the way to Austria. It's beautiful. <laughs> And yeah, it's a you know Europe, a small continent, um, <laughs> a small country. So um, we built this house, and I was 18. My sister was four. There is a huge difference. Same pants, if you're wondering. Uh, and uh, the thing was, the first time it was winter, we snowed in, and we live on top of the hill. So we had our garden turn into our very own sledding slope, all the way. And it was awesome. We had the slats, and uh, so when I was home from college and the weekends, the usual program was my mother looking at me in the morning going, take your sister outside. She, she needs the fresh air. So I was responsible for entertaining my sister and taking her outside sledding in the garden. You have to know two things about my sister. One, she's special, like in all the senses of the word. And two, she is very lazy. <laughs> so on top of, you know, have your parents ever did that thing to you in the winter? Of course they did, when you're wearing so many layers that you're kind of like this. And then you have to go to the bathroom and it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets wrapped up like that. And then we had a sled for her. The problem is that she doesn't like, you know, holding herself up. She doesn't like just sitting on the sled. Plus, when she's wrapped up like this, she kind of, she, she's kind of like a plank. She doesn't bend in the middle. <laughs> so she either, you know, you either lie her down flat on the sled, which is not really, you know, fun for her because she doesn't see anything except for the sky, um, or you modify the sled. And that what happened was my father took the back of a chair and nailed it onto the back of the sled. So even though my sister still doesn't bend in the middle, you could kind of prop her up. She can't see where she's going. Not that she, she cannot do anything about it, but she can't see where she's going. So I take her outside on top of the hill, prop her up on the sled, and then I just push her. And then she goes, wee down. And until she hit about, you know, 60 pounds, she was not heavy enough to go with enough momentum to go over the, the end of the garden and into the bushes. When she got heavier, she went further, so she started, she ended up in the bushes. But this was before, she was four years old, she was okay. So we took one prop her up, push her down, she slides down, and then I told her she's lazy, I have to walk down the hill, no fun for me, and then drag her back up, sled and everything. And this is an old-fashioned, my grandfather made it sled. It has iron on the bottom. It's heavier than my sister. Uh, so that's my exercise for the weekend, dragging her up the hill and then pushing her down again. So when we moved out to the countryside, we moved to a village that uh, borders on the village where my grandparents live. I told you, small country, small town, small village. Um, I can walk down to my grand grandparents' place in about half an hour in good weather. When it snowed in, it's kind of longer. So one Saturday morning, my mother looks at me and she says, you should visit your grandparents and you should take your sister. <laughs> so she bundles with my sister up and my sister's kind of like this and uh, she, de she wears diapers so that's okay, she doesn't have to go to the bathroom after she's bundled up. Um, and she said, you can just take her on the sled. You can just put her on the sled and then just pull her over the bench. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's snowed in, it should be easy. She slides, the sled slides, that's fine. Even though we had to go down the hill and then we have to walk on flat, straight streets over to grandma's. So I put my sister on the sled, I give her a little push, she slides down, and then I walk down after her and grab the reins of the sled and start dragging her away from the hill and down to the street. After 
about five minutes of walking, it starts getting heavier and heavier to drag. So I kind of look around and what happened was I, my sister doesn't keep her feet on the sled. So she was, she had her heels dug in on both sides. <laughs> so I was dragging about 20 pounds of sister and then about 20 pounds of snow. And, and I couldn't see her, it was just a pile of snow on the sled. She kind of gathered and died all the snow and that, but that's what I was dragging. So I dig her out. <laughs> she's laughing at me and she's completely covered in snow. And then I hail my mother down who was standing out in the garden watching us go. She likes doing that. And I guess that means that you're not going to be back for another hour at least. Uh, so she's watching us go, so I hail her down and, you know, show her that my sister's plowing all the way and she refuses to keep her heels on the sled, which would make my life easier. Uh, but she really enjoys doing that. So my mother comes down and she puts her my sister's feet on the sled and we pull her a few feet and she puts them down again. And you can't tell her not to do that, so we have to find a solution. So my mother says, okay, this is not working. You're never going to make it grand to grandma's when you're plowing all the way. <laughs> so she runs back up to the house and then she appears about 10 minutes later with duct tape. <laughs> Um, she appears with duct tape and scissors. She puts my sister's legs on the sled. She duct, tape, duct tapes her all the way around the sled. And then for good measure around the waist too. So she's completely 100% fixed onto the sled. If, if it falls, it, they off, she falls. It's, not, it, it's, not, it's one entity. <laughs> so now that she cannot plow anymore, I can happily drag her down to the street. So I drag her around the corner and my mother waves goodbye. And I get to the street when it's completely flat all the way to my grandma's and I realize that somebody has been busy in the village because the entire street has been clear. Mm -hmm. I'm dragging my sister on the sled on concrete. Oh. Oh. It's about a 20 minute walk, and good better. Not when you're dragging a sled. So the sled ha has iron on the bottom, and I'm dragging it on concrete. It Sparks are flying. <laughs> it sounds like somebody's killing a transformer. <laughs> there are dogs in every single garden on both sides of the street. The dogs are going completely crazy, howling. My sister's she, sister started whining half the way through because she was getting bored. So my sister's crying, the dogs are howling, the sled is flying sparks, and I'm dragging her across the village. <laughs> By the time I got to grandma's, somebody already called her to tell her that some psycho is dragging her grandchild through the village, duct tape to a sled. She appears to be kidnapped by somebody. They recognized me. They recognized my sister because she was wearing the hat that my grandma made. So they knew that she was the granddaughter and she was being duct taped and kidnapped. So by the time we got there, my grandmother was completely freaked out. The entire village, it's like Facebook, you know, offline. She knows everybody. So she was getting all the phone calls from all the people who lived in those gardens along the street. And she was she was completely out of it. My sister was frozen. She her head, her face was red and she was crying her heart out because she was bored and she wanted to get off the sled. So we get to grandma's, we unduct tape her, kind of get her off the sled, prop her up, unbottle her and warm her back up in grandma's living room. And uh, we were really lucky that nobody called child protective services that day. <laughs> but uh, that was a lesson. And uh, next time my mom told me to take my sister to grandma's, I just walked. <laughs> <laughs>